Paul McDonald, a school teacher and thrill seeker, is not quite so lucky when his joyride ends in complete disaster. Vince LaMarche and Paul McDonald have been friends for more than 10 years, sharing a passion for motorcycles and the open road. In October 2001, the pair traveled to San Francisco to visit McDonald's parents. Early the next morning, they ride north to what they expect to be a long stretch of empty road. Armed with a helmet cam, LaMarche rides behind his friend and off to one side. We got up and he wanted to go out and do some filming. Just being a maniac on the streets in San Francisco. The weather wasn't too bad. It was a little foggy, but it was cool. McDonald has been deaf since birth and communicates with the help of a sign language interpreter. I thought of a good place uh, by the beach. It was very empty. There were no trees. There was no parked cars. There were no people. There was nothing for me to hit if I made a mistake. To communicate visually, LaMarche and McDonald ride in a staggered pattern. I always tried to stay on his left because that way he didn't have to let go of the throttle to sign to me. He was basically dictating where we were going. You know, he doesn't do the whole follow thing well. A self-described daredevil, McDonald decides to become just a little more adventurous. Now I pulled a wheelie and I was doing a knack-knack. And that's when I take one leg and I put it over on the other side and I pull on the bike to keep the center of gravity, the balance. It's very difficult to do. It's not safe, but I felt okay in, the, in that area. It was something new for him. His attention, I don't think, was too much on the trick. It was more on the car that was illegally parked on the side of the road. An unexpected and dangerous obstacle in a no parking, no standing zone. McDonald is approaching the car quickly with only seconds to react. I noticed that he was looking at the car a little bit more than he should have because the rule on the bike is look there, go there. And with him on the bike looking at that car, I figured you better look down the road because you're going to steer right into it. Even at the front wheel in the air like that, you can still turn by looking somewhere. Because just your body language tends to move you over. He was just so mesmerized that he just more surprised than anything else that the car was even there. McDonald frantically tries to recover, but when he sets down his front tire, the bike begins to wobble uncontrollably. I figured, okay, maybe he can ride this one out or give it some throttle to pick the front wheel back up and it'll stop, but it just got too violent too fast. McDonald braces for impact. The bars were going back and forth. They were just too violent. And I thought, I better not fall off to the right. I've got to fall off to the left, because I saw the road was coming up fast. And then it was lights out for me. The brutal collision sends McDonald spinning onto the middle of the road, his motorcycle shattering into pieces. After he hit the back of that car, I mean, it was pretty horrific. I didn't want to have to call his mom. I just didn't want to have to make that phone call. LaMarche, still filming, pulls over and rushes back to his friend. First thing was to get my bike stopped and get over to him to see if he was still breathing. I saw the bike in the background. It was smoking. It was finished. And I looked down at him. His eyes were rolled back in his head. He looked a little grave. Um, it, it looked bad. It looked really bad. LaMarche removes his helmet cam as eyewitnesses call 911. McDonald lays still, showing few signs of life. Luckily, a doctor and nurse are walking nearby and keep McDonald still and stable. And when I heard him moaning, I figured, oh, okay, at least he's still alive. I was trying to keep him down, but usually in a wreck like that, you know, Especially somebody like Paul, he's like, oh, I'm not hurt, I'm not hurt, I'm going to get up. The emergency response is swift, but McDonald's injuries are severe. Internal bleeding, a fractured collarbone, five cracked ribs, and both hands broken. My first thought was, where are my hands? What about my hands? How am I going to communicate with my family, my friends? Though McDonald has not completely recovered, 
After years of physical therapy, he has regained full use of his hands. I'm a little bit glad that Vince had that camera on and was recording me. I really do believe that this video can show other people out there what can go wrong. McDonnell attributes his survival to proper protective gear. I definitely believe in my equipment and my helmet and my gloves and my boots. That's what saved me for sure. If you can't afford the safety equipment, if you can't afford to be as safe as possible, you have no business starting something. McDonald still takes to the highway, but approaches the ride a little differently. I really do believe that to become old and wise, you have to be young and stupid first. That's what I was back then. Now, I'd like to think I'm older and wiser. 